Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to the Thaumaturge. In the last video, we cleared up a whole lot of our side quests and stuff like that. We really don't have much left whatsoever, but we did just run into Aberishi, who is standing on the street and seemingly has a quest. So we are going to get this done before we move on. You want to quote me? Then start writing. Here goes a poem. If I want poetry, I'll read some Konopnitska. In Śródmieście, the bastards went on strike. And that's something I don't like. So I grab an axe in my hand. <sighs> this is a serious story. Workers deserve some respect. Shut the fuck up and write. I grab an axe in my hand and... Victor, give me a rhyme. <laughs> Finish it puckishly. I do like to finish things puckishly. I will try not to get the clap in my rear end. Good one. W.S. I expected more of you. Oh, shut up, Tobias. I thought the press lived off that kind of scoop. The press has its limitations, W.S. But we journalists at least try to make a change, unlike many others. What was that about? Don't worry. It's just a shitty situation. Do you want to come by for a drink? I can tell you all about it then. Sure. Lead the way. I have a lot of respect and love for journalism, but not this kind of journalism. <laughs> you know? Well, speak. W.S.? Seriously? How lame is that? Anyway. The sewers in the neighborhood were commissioned by Neumeyer, but the workers just dug it all up, and now they're on strike, or wandering around. And when I send my shivs after them, more flood in. Do something before I kill them all. Romek. Maybe a friend Romek could help. They say he's a good chap. Stop bragging about your adventures. I'm suffering here. You gave him a fat lip, and you got a life lesson. Nothing to get dramatic about. That doesn't sound like you, does it, Avarishi? Why are the workers on strike? Neumeyer, their employer, fired a few of them, so the guys got pissed and started a riot. Maybe I could talk to them. Be my guest. Those that were fired are hanging out in my bar and drinking. And those who still have jobs, uh, you can find them in the southern part of the district. Follow those trenches they dug. You won't miss them. So who is that Neumeyer? He came from Germany. Decent fellow. They say he's got some experience in that sort of enterprise. Since when do you regard decent people? Since the sounds of construction keep banging in my ears. The guy has an office on Poznańska Street. You'll see a sign. I'll see what I can do. Good. Whatever makes them go back to work, whether you do some hocus pocus or send a demon after one of them, I don't mind. How about we come up with some buddy names for us? Great idea. I'll leave it up to you. Man, I won't let you down. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm going to just nip over and do this first just because it's, uh, on a timer and it makes me slightly paranoid. I'm like I'm like 99% sure it's fine, but it just makes me a little bit paranoid. I'm not sure how I feel about this, if I'm honest, because I am inherently, I'm, I'm, this is like union busting almost. Kabbalah is a type of thaumaturgy that arose from the traditions of Judaism. It combines mysticism with philosophy and practical thaumaturgic knowledge. Kabbalists jealousy, jealously guard their secrets and are not exactly eager to share their knowledge with those outside their community. This is probably why some thaumaturgists disdain Kabbalah and think it nothing more than children's stories. Nevertheless, many amazing legends and tales have arisen around the Kabbalists, which spur the imagination and make people believe that their powers go far beyond what thaumaturgic science considers possible. And then a little bit of info on Rabbi Isaac Sofa. Father knew the old rabbi quite well. Was he also in on this whole coterie thing? In the correspondence I found, Sofa was clearly torn, but felt he had to do his part. He was driven by conflicting emotions. I just thought to him. 
Wait, what? Oh, right, we got more info. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not really a union thing per se, but I mean, it feels like the equivalent, right? I mean, they're striking because essentially for better conditions, you know, they, they've been, people have been fired and they're striking in solidarity. And I'm going to go break it up. That, I don't know. Theatre Repertoire, Theatre Rosmatajti, Program, Friday, September 15th, 1905. Mrs. Castellanova, a one-act drama by Josef Kozinevorsky, <laughs> Theatre Con, Friends, a four-act comedy by Count Alexander Fredro, the father. A list of plays being performed at Theatre Rosmatajti, Romantoshi. On Friday, September 15th, they include a performance by a theatre troupe from Thailand. I'd like to go to Thailand. <laughs> My dad's got this mate. It was like this typical middle-aged, what you'd call a gammon if you're from Britain, right? It's a, it's a certain type of like middle-aged white lad, right? Um, loves his football, loves his wife, loves Britain, hates woke, you know, all that kind of jazz. Damage poster, Thai Theatre Con starts at half seven. Nothing can be kept secret from me. Sweet, sweet secret. Okay, for you from Thailand, bottom half ripped off. September 15th, 7 p.m., Theater Rosman Dojirushi. <laughs> Thai troupe will hold a performance with demonic masks. Let's go. Um, and, you know, we got on perfectly well. You know, we used to go to the pub and we'd talk about football and have a few drinks and, yeah, fine. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, it's Newmeyer. Oh, while I'm here, go on then. Well, this is negotiation, so let's negotiate. You won't finish the job without us. That's the truth. Mr. Neumeyer? Nicht jetzt. How many times do I have to tell you? This can't be done. It doesn't work like that. That's not how you do Geschäfte. Listen, sir, we won't give up. Either you can take back the men you fired, or you can say goodbye to the workers you've got left. You can build these sewers yourself, you lousy capitalist asshole. Rude! This is just gutter talk, not negotiations. Both sides determined to achieve their goals are not going to back down. Looks like I have to help them. The gutter is quite fitting, actually. You're building the sewers, after all. Victor, that's not helpful. <laughs> it's a joke. Who are you, and what do you want? <laughs> Victor, please. A friend asked me to take a look at the strike. Strike? What strike? The strike is over. The negotiations are through, and everyone goes back to work. No. Lads, the strike's still on. We're not touching the work. It's knockoff time until further notice. Maybe now you can spare me a moment? Not here. Follow me, please. I bet you regret those layoffs now, don't you? Better hair. I deal with that kind of aggression every day. I got used to it. Zeitest Geld, what brings you here? I want to, yeah, I want to know. Well, it depends why he fired, like, let's say he fired the guys for good cause, then I'm on his side. If you fired the guys, save a bit of money. I don't know, I struggle with this a little bit. Let's say if you run a business, you need to fire people sometimes. That's just part and parcel of capitalism. And just because you criticize the system doesn't mean you don't engage in the system. You can't not engage in capitalism and survive, you know? That's just the way of the world. It's very much like that meme of the guy who pops up out of the well and says, you criticize society and yet you're part of it. How curious. It's the same deal. Like, you just can't... And like, unless you want to go and build a homestead somewhere, which just isn't viable for most people anyway. The funny thing is, if you want to go build a homestead, you would need to engage in capitalism to the point that you basically win at capitalism and have enough money to go and set up your own thing. Or you could live van life. But even then, you need to engage in a little bit. The point is, you can't avoid it. So, I don't know, can you strike just because your mates got fired? I guess not, really. If you're striking over bad conditions or bad pay or something, I think that's fair enough. But striking just because your fellow man got laid off... It depends why. Yeah. Why did the workers go on strike? 
Sir, I fired those who drank at work and everyone suddenly went mad. You're Poland. I don't understand you. Yeah, I mean... It's time to bring this country into the 20th century. In Germany, it's unthinkable to drink vodka at work. Okay. So whilst that is a legitimate reason... This is also right. I know I keep doing this and kind of going off on my own tangents, but it's it's kind of an interesting topic. Because this comes up a lot. Let's say you're talking about something more serious. Let's talk, say you're talking about homophobic attitudes. Obviously, in the West, um, and large portions of the entire world, <clears throat> homophobia is disdained, as it should be. You know, all rights are human rights. All human rights are equal. Whether you're gay, straight... Whatever you choose to identify as, you should have the same rights. And that's in terms of adoption, in terms of marriage, in terms of absolutely everything. There's no reason to discriminate, right? I should go without saying. However, let's say in Saudi Arabia or Qatar or that specific portion of the Middle East, this is sticking on my mind just because of football and there's more and more sporting events being held there and there's a lot of criticism because of um, you know, homophobic attitudes still very much present there. But it's part of their, I don't want to say culture, but it's, it's sort of built into the religion to an extent. And not that you have to listen to that point, that's a whole other kettle of fish. But it's kind of part of the culture and it's just how they're raised. And every like most people there would fundamentally believe that homosexuality is a sin and wrong. And not something you should tolerate to an extent. Now, I sit and I say obviously that's incorrect, right? And obviously that's nonsense. So I'm basically the German guy and if i went to saudi arabia i still be like well guys you can't be homophobic it's bad you know everyone deserves equal rights and i, I understand that equating human rights with drinking vodka at work isn't quite the same thing but the point is you have a set of norms for your world to what extent is it okay to go to someone else's world and impose your cultural norms on them because you believe your cultural norms to be right you know what i mean this is like a scaled down version of that now, to an extent, I'm thinking, well, but I mean, these are like basic fundamental human rights. Surely everyone should, nobody should be discriminated based on these. But then you could take that the other way. What if there's a culture where, you know, there are cultures where, like, murder or rape or whatever isn't seen as taboo, isn't seen as big a deal. Uh, it's hard from this perspective because you, you always feel like you're, in terms of protecting people's liberty to live you've got to think you know we're pretty much at the top for that you know in terms of protecting people on that respect so it's easy to suggest that other places need to rise to meet your level but maybe you should be able to wantonly murder whoever you want i don't know <laughs> it's uh, i it's true it, i very much believe that it should be a universally applied thing that you know you can't be homophobic for example but i think it is trickier than that in reality it's interesting to think about. So, what's the story with those layoffs? I don't like inaction. So when I set new rules and people kept drinking, I gave them an ultimatum. And how much time did you give them to adapt to the new rules? What do you mean? There's action and there's reaction. I set the new rules on Monday and on Wednesday, I let them go. <laughs> what you did was stupid. <laughs> Are you standing up for these drunkards? What, are you a socialist? A little bit. That's not the point. You can't expect these people to change overnight. I mean, I don't think he's wrong in that if you... Okay, ignoring what I said about imposing cultural norms, if you're the head of the business and you set a rule, it is perfectly acceptable to assume that people are going to follow that rule. At the end of the day, you own the business, you know how the work should be done, and especially with construction work, I wouldn't want people drinking on the job either. However, this isn't really a moral quandary as opposed to just being realistic about the fact you're trying to change these people instantly. Maybe you need to give them just a little bit of wiggle room for the good of the overall business and for the good of yourself, really. Is that a spider on my ceiling? Hello. Just to say, you know, I'm changing these rules. You've got a week to adjust. What do you mean by aggression? I'm talking about that troglodyte, that ruder guy. These miscurl. What did he do? He smeared my office windows with shit. Scheiße. I know it was him. I know it. 
I have no proof, but I know it. Hmm. Can you imagine that gestank? That stink? I'm really enjoying, um... Rudy favors the argument of strength and clearly has no sympathy for Numa. I'll get going. I had my reasons, mostly concerning work ethics, but there are always many factors involved. This is complicated. You know what it's like. Games love doing this, where somebody will talk in English for... <laughs> New Mike seems to be looking for a way out of financial troubles. Interesting. Games are always like, um... They'll have, if it's a foreign, inverted commas, character, they'll talk in English or whatever the language the game is in, and they'll throw in a few foreign words randomly along the way. Uh, let's talk to everyone here. <clears throat> Rudy last Rutkowski. So Neumeyer never tried to find a solution? German Ordnung stifles the proletariat, you might say? That's what it looks like, and that's what we're saying. I can see I'm not the only one who wants to talk to you. I don't like crowds. I'll come back to you later. Don't like your heart. Do you have another joke to tell? <laughs> Not this time. I wanted to talk. Go ahead, ask. I don't have anything to do anyway. I wanted to know the story behind those layoffs, from your point of view. The story. The story. Sir, this is all bullshit. That's the whole story. You know that Neumar banned drinking at work. He mentioned it, but he suggested it wasn't the only reason. Well, there you go. He said it himself. The cat's out of the bag. The drinking wasn't why he fired those people. Then what was it? I don't care. People end up in the streets, families get deprived of their livelihoods, and that bastard plays the angel. I won't have it. None of us will work until all the boys are back. But again, that doesn't make sense as a... Like, I, I understand work uh, solidarity, take down the bourgeoisie, etc. But let's say your fellow worker had dismembered a child <laughs> and posted the body parts to various uh, theatres around town as a sort of performance art. Don't know where that came from. Um... Are you going to say, well, no, his family are starving. He should be allowed to continue working. No, there are repercussions. Are you friends with Mr. Fagin? No, but at least he's trying to cover the issue fairly. What the censorship will do with it is another story, though. Do you know anything more about him? Even if I knew, I wouldn't say. Fair. I won't bother you anymore. All right, who's this other lad? Oh, it must have been Fagin, actually. All right, Rudy, what's up? Can I take a moment of your time? Look, Yannick, there's a clown. You want to hear something funny? I'll tell you. Forget it, Rude. Don't waste your breath. He's definitely going to no, try to beat I'll me up. No, I'll say it. My sister will end up in the street with five kids, penniless. And there's no way I can help her. Well, do you find it funny? I'm not going to say yes. <laughs> no, I'm not saying yes. It's all because of that dickhead Neumeyer. I'll kill that motherfucker. Hmm. I'm not sure that's the take. Right, anyways, I'm gonna go. We'll, we'll come back. Oh, hello. Lunchbox is signed. It belongs to Marek Rutkowski. Look okay, at hiccups. Emptiness radiates from the lunchbox. <laughs> it was supposed to be love everlasting. Growing gold together and taking slow walks to the market to pick up her favorite bread. Instead, there's loneliness and sadness, routine and anger. Not a sandwich in sight. <clears throat> I know what, while we're here, let's just bloody focus on this quest. Oh my god, ah. Uh, right, I want to press RB. I'm going to follow Rudy's thoughts. Rudy, 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 Rudy! Ma, 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 ma! Is that blood? It's blood on. Hands like the blood in you. Getting apprehensive about next week, folks. 
Grosha on the benefits of bathhouses. We must be convinced that the widespread use of bathhouses will contribute a great deal to the eradication of wastefulness among the population, get rid of many diseases and vulnerabilities to succumb to them, reduce our medical expenses and contribute to the rise of people who are healthy, firm, vigorous and productive. As our living, living conditions are growing ever more difficult, we need to strive towards increasing our strength. Meanwhile, we see that people are growing weaker. To heal the nation, to bolster its vitality and bravery, this is our first task. A healthy spirit can only be nurtured in a healthy body. And frequent use of bathhouses is the most important condition for health. <clears throat> oh, we've got another quest. Scientific study more than a dozen pages, according to which frequent use of bathhouses bolsters vitality and bravery. I wonder... I wonder so many things. Newspaper article, striking Neumeyer's company, Neumeyer. Black clouds are gathering over Wolfgang Neumeyer's enterprise. Following the changes he introduced, Mr. Neumeyer was forced to release half his workforce. However, this was met with a harsh protest, and the remaining employees have gone on strike and refused to go back to work until their co-workers are taken back. Negotiations are in process, yet none of the sides are willing to give in. The strike leaders, apart from pleading for their colleagues, have made additional demands. Higher wages and a 90-minute lunch break. Oh. The conflict is sure to affect the entire town as the sewage system construction is grounds with sandstill, and there's no telling when it'll be resumed. Yesterday's issue of the Courier, article about the upcoming workers strike on the front page. The newspaper is crumpled and torn. Office closed, customers of all sorts kindly ask to come back tomorrow. Well. A note on the door indicates the office will not open anytime soon. The carefully calligraph callig callig calligraphed? Calligraphed. I don't think I've I, I mean I know calligraphy, obviously. I don't think I've ever seen calligraphed as a uh, past tense verb like that. That's interesting. Letters of the note tremble from the stress of enveloping them. Tension flattens their bellies, curves their lines, and turns the dots into fear-soaked blobs over the fate of Noemeyer's conversation with the workers. Oh, this is relevant to the... Uh, Noemeyer went on to negotiate with the striking workers, and something tells me he was not in a particularly conciliatory mood. His office will be closed until tomorrow, which perhaps creates a certain opportunity. Oh, interesting. Bucket full of manure. Wet shit hits the glass with a satisfying splat. This is for the fired brother-in-law who's drowning his despair in booze. This is for the sister who will end up on the street. For the sorrow, injustice, and drudgery that this prick Neumeyer visits upon ordinary people. Shitty vengeance is vengeance all the same. Warpath. Rudy is a rabble riser who hates Neumeyer. End of story. I can get him to attack his boss, no problem. But I mean, why would I? Why would I want that? <laughs> office door. The office door is locked. Trace familiar, worried person. Words float above the doors, meticulous wood carving, light and airy like fluff. They whisper of a great mystery, a hiding place unknown to anyone. Under a concrete slab and invisible to human eyes lies a spare key to the office. Ah. Since the office is locked, and I accidentally found out where the key is, I have to follow through and go in there, right? Besides, what he sees doesn't hurt him. The things people come up with. Right. In we go. Bear with me. Sometimes you have to walk away. There you go. I'll do some exploring. What was I going to talk about? I, mean, I was about to start yet another spiel <laughs> about something. I don't remember what it was. Oh, bathhouses. Bathhouses now have a very specific, at least, again, here, they have a very specific connotation, and in the US and stuff like that. In Turkey, people still go to bathhouses to chill, but it isn't a thing here in like a social aspect. Here, a bathhouse is very much a... it's a gay thing, basically. Like, it's a, it's a meeting place for men, predominantly. Accounts ledger. Columns in the ledger reveal a sad truth about the company. Profits and losses don't balance out. Words full of desperation and determination are scattered between book pages. He must let people go, it's the only way. But he must keep up appearances. He needs an excuse. Drinking at work. No one will feel sorry for drunk cards. No one will shed a tear. <clears throat> oh, I'm inside the table. So a worried person is obviously no more. The phone has greasy fingerprints on it. Someone uses it often and rarely cleans it. Words of disappointment and resignation pour from the phone receiver. They talk about a loan that was almost granted, but ultimately fell through. About dashed hopes and the realisation no chance for a loan. Made for the purchase of purebred Hanoverian, Hano, like from Hanover, Hanoverian stallion with the proud name Bucephalus. The sum is impressive. Bucephalus, is that? I was just watching. Wait, I need to check this. Bear with me. But oh, didn't know I was going to Bucephalus. 
Phallus. The ho oh no, it's the horse of Alexander the Great. One of the most famous horses of classical antiquity, apparently. There you go. A fancy horse. <clears throat> I should really just do that. Instead of going on my phone, I should really just tab out and type quickly. I don't know. Painting entitled Bucephalus. Under the owner calls it Busi. Words of pride hover over the painting. Pride in owning a thoroughbred mount. A mount that doesn't walk but flows. That doesn't jump but flies. And its nostrils are as soft as a cloud. <laughs> Leaks above all other horses and everything. No wonder he doesn't have any money left. Neumeyer's situation. The solution to the problem lies right under Neumeyer's nose. The money from the sale of this horse would put an end to his liquidity, liquidity problems. But, well, the horse would have to be sold first, and apparently that is painful. Fortunately, I'm able to soothe the rich man's aching heart. The telephone. Am I just going to answer someone else's phone? Sure. Let's say something stupid. No, let's say nothing. Hello? Hello? What the hell with this fucking technology? Oh. I should have said hello. <laughs> I, didn't, I mean, I didn't think say nothing meant say nothing ever. I thought it meant, you know, let's not talk initially. Let's, you know, let them say the first word. That's all I wanted to do. <clears throat> but it's interesting. I feel like... In a weird way, we not I mean, maybe it's just me, but we kind of corrupt things. Not that I think something being used primarily for sex of any kind is like a corruption, but I feel like we have a habit of sexualizing things that weren't initially like that. Like, I think if you say to someone in the UK that you went to a massage parlor, people would take that a certain way. Like, people would maybe... I think it, maybe it's just the word parlor. I think if you went to see a masseuse... I don't know, maybe it's my own prejudice. But I think people would assume certain things. It's just interesting to think, when did that twist, in a way? Is it just media exploitation, or? I don't know. Hey, Wooer, stop making faces and buy another round. We need to drink to Neumeyer breaking his stupid face. And where do I get the dough? Besides, I ain't a woo Wow, Wooer. Easy there, or you're going to pop a vein. Let's get some shots to warm us up. Although you've got your lady love for that, right? Go fuck yourself. What do you want? Oi, Janusz, we've got company. Is he buying or just making a fuss? Buying, I'm buying. I'm impressed with the male bonding that you apparently share. Oh, Victor. It seems so enduring. Magnificent. Weird. Oi, Janusz. Is he, like, making advances at us? Uh, too much beard for my taste. <laughs> Marionic? If he buys us vodka, we can cuddle. Balan vodka. Vodka. With working people. Any time, any place. And with respect. It's on me. In that case, all is fine and dandy, my dear friend. Wait, Marianek, wait, it's too much. I mean, too much... Manana. What? Who are you? Really? I'm a thaumaturge, Viktor Shulski. Oh, so you're gonna enchant us? <laughs> Janusz, look! I'll be a thumita... Tamar, Tamar, ah, whatever. <laughs> wait, wait, Marian. Wasn't that dickhead Neumeyer friends with a Shulski? Also a thaumaturge? Fuck me, it was all right. You probably mean my father. Fuck it, what's the difference? Get the vodka and fuck off. Oh. Didn't do well here, did I? <laughs> Didn't do well at all. I kind of forgot about that connection. I mean, again, like, if someone came up to me and their dad was, like, a mass murderer, it wouldn't make me think of them any differently whatsoever. So the fact that other people keep bloody doing it, 
I don't think it's a reflection on them more than a reflection on me is what I would like to see. Oh, hey, Tobias. Have you learned anything? Actually, I wanted to ask you myself about Neumeyer. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours? Fine. Wolfgang Neumeyer. Born 1858, father Klaus, mother Anna, younger son, runs the local branch of his father's empire. What else? He has a reputation as a successful entrepreneur, but I don't think that's valid anymore. He eats dumplings for dinner and doesn't add sugar to his tea. Shoe size 41. And a half. That's quite impressive. Your turn. What do you know? I got to an offer that Neumeyer recently received. Someone wanted to buy his horse, with the charming name Bucephalus. Right. Of course it had to be a horse. Rich people are so predictable. No offense. The city still has no sewer system, families end up in the streets, while Herr Neumeyer would rather keep his purebred stallion than secure people's livelihood. That's how it will read. Can you give me that offer? You can't put it like that. What was the man supposed to do? Sell his own possessions to save the company? Yes. It's his company, W.S. He got into debt, so he should save it. Contrary to what rich people believe, it is possible to live without a purebred stallion and champagne. Besides, this document is something more. It's leverage that the workers can use to force their demands. It's oh. a change for the proletariat. <clears throat> We have to make it public, W.S. I should have talked to this man. I should never have talked to him. Um. Oh, God. It will force him to sell the horse, which is probably the right thing to do. But I feel like it isn't fair to force him with external forces and that I should go and talk to him directly and get him... I, sh I should convince him to sell the horse. It shouldn't be done... I mean, it's really different if I do it to if the newspaper does it. Yeah, because the newspaper makes it public. I don't think he really deserves that. But on the other hand, he should sell the goddamn horse. Like, what are you doing? You're firing people and your business is falling apart and you're still keeping a fancy horse. But I kind of get it. You get attached to things. Unnecessarily. I'm going to keep it to myself. I don't think he's right. I'll think about it. Of course you would defend one of your own kind. But remember, this is about the life of ordinary folk. Those who don't eat oysters for breakfast. Come back to me if you change your mind. I'm not likely to if you were that goddamn attitude, Tobias, let me tell you. <laughs> not come oh, hello. Oh, we can manipulate. Hey, Velas. Looking creepy as ever. Mr. Neumeyer. Yeah? Make himself boost out. I think this is the right thing to do. Deep in your heart, you know what's important, and what the right thing to do is. It's the man that counts, not the horse. Yeah, you're right. Meine Herren, listen to me, please. I know some bad words have been said, but I have found a solution. Your Freunde will go back to work. Really? Yeah. I've understood what really matters. You are the most important. Now, everyone can get back to work. Ich verspreche es. Has he lost his mind or what? Gentlemen, it worked. We'll start a union. <laughs> okay, I mean, I think that was good. I mean, I say this is the right thing to do. I had to manipulate him. Control him with a demon. <laughs> it's definitely not the right thing to do. If I could have just had, like, a reasonable conversation with him and say, you know what, buddy? Save the business, get people back to work. It isn't worth the hassle. Just get rid of the horse, and this will work out in the long run. Then fine. I, like I, I would not have personally involved my magical, mystical demon. I say that if I was in these, like morally, I think involving the demon is wrong. Would I have done the same thing? Well, that's a whole other kettle of fish. I think if you had a demon that could manipulate people like that, it would be very tempting. And we all like to think we're above it, but I think when push comes to shove, we're probably not. Done. The wheels are in motion. I'm accepting compliments. I could kiss your forehead. How did you manage to do that? It turned out Neumeyer had a purebred horse. It was worth enough to re-employ all the people he had fired. So he decided to sell it. How generous. 
And voluntarily, of course. Of course. Of course. Believe it or not, I've been quite busy myself. Listen to this. Spirit King and Phantom Prince. Or, better yet, Poet and Pilgrim. Get it? You're the poet and I'm the pilgrim because I've traveled a lot? You bet. And fuck that guy with his W.S. So see you around, pilgrim. See you around, poet. Okay, good stuff. All right, let's go get this done and this done, and then we are done done. Unless we stumble upon something else, which we rather inevitably will do. I'm suddenly in a lot of pain. I'm just trying to... My chest. But, like, in a very specific part, like, the right-hand side? It's very unusual. It's like... Oh. I don't think it's a breathing thing. I think it's a muscle thing. I got a thing wherein, um, when I'm doing... I do an exercise called incline dumbbell bench rows, where you put your workout bench at an incline and you lie across the bench with the dumbbells on the floor and you pull them up towards yourself. It's like a shoulder exercise. Um, but when you're pulling high weights, and I'm using 25 kilos in each hand at the moment, you um, you push down on the bench quite hard with your chest, and I think that actually hurts sometimes, basically. A cigarello rolled with precision, someone here has skills. The perfectly rolled cigarette butt is wrapped in thoughts as bitter as poor quality tobacco and burned through with the claim about the certainty of tomorrow. A comfortable home, elegant attire, things that can't be bought on the modest salary of an Orana agent. Things you can only dream about. It was exceptional, I don't think I'll go again. The golden masks look too much like real demons lurking on the outskirts of my field of view. Cool though. Hello, sleuth. What's going on? Wait, 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 what's going on down here? Numerous folds and food stains marking the pages. Bitter reflections on whether it's appropriate to comment on the photo on Kanishkin's desk, gathering the folds of the newspaper. The conclusion? Mistake paid for by the shit task of tailing the young rich man. Only one thing can bring this suffering to an end. A juicy denunciation. The sad men. It seems that Kaneshkin sent this man to tail me. Is that a compliment or a affront? It's hard to tell. The men are clearly disgusted by the task and will be happy to report back to the chief with the spicy details of my life. I can convince them their job is done. Oh, so is this. Hey guys. Hey, what is this? Is this part of the other quest? This one? Hey. Since we keep following one another around, Maybe we should introduce ourselves. What are you talking about? You guys are so devoted. Is the pay worth so much hard work? Maybe it's time to fight for a raise. I don't want to keep mucking around in this crap. Not for this kind of money. Following some spoiled brat around, standing for hours outside people's windows. And God alone knows what for. Not for this kind of money. Wait up. I'm not gonna stand here on my own with him. Let's talk to the chief. See you later. Cool. Oh, la, 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 la. I just, it's, it's the last thing we have to do. Am I gonna walk all the way? Yeah, I am, yeah. I just, it's the last one with a timer. Like, I, obviously, we don't have the Taylor one now. Oh, okay. Weird. We'll do- uh, yeah, screw it, let's go. We'll do this and we'll come back. It looks like this is the last thing we're gonna do at all, so... Daily Curious, Meet the Classifiers. The month of September, readings and devotions for children of 8 to 12 years old, offered by ZBM. Prices 20 kopecks, main store in the bookshop, RT, Paproki and Co. Jack bargain price, standalone fronts to the right of the station, dry, healthy location. Once a Pietrick will point you in the right direction, central bathhouse. We hear I know a few that due to planned renovations, the bathhouse will be closed for three months. You can visit until September, Saturday 16th, the owners. Warsaw Steam Oil Mill recommends its burning oil. Orders taken by phone. Newspaper open on a classified section. Among them is an important announcement for the owners of the central bathhouse last week to visit before it closes. And that'll be why it's a uh, timed mission, I suppose. It's about to shut down. 
Dun, 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 dun. How many more skill points do we need to finish? 3, 6, 12, 18, 24, 26. 28 skill points away. So I, I still need 26 more skill points. That's kind of... Hello. Beer. It's got flavor. Vitamins and minerals. I don't drink for health. Vodka. I can see you're having a serious debate, gentlemen. Better tell us what you prefer. Nothing cools you down like a cold beer, especially now. Especially in the morning. <laughs> and you take your fancy schmancy taste and get out of here. Get up, both of you! Vodka! Are we fighting about this? Of course we are. <laughs> it's been so long, I haven't beaten anyone up in 40 minutes of gameplay, which is madness. Bukovac, buddy, do you think? I much, much prefer beer to vodka. I've just been honest, you know. I think these guys are meant to be a. What is he doing with his gun? Now? Racking them up. I just want to see how many I, I don't know how many I can get on one character. Dum, da dum. Wanna fight only by imposing state at sea? I didn't know that was gonna happen, but I can pretend I knew that was gonna happen. Got myself a little achievement. Given that was probably the easiest fight I've had since episode one, that uh, seems like a good time to do so. To the bathhouse. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are like legit Turkish baths and stuff like that here in the UK. I know it definitely doesn't have that connotation though. Flowers, their colour is a lovely yellow, almost gold. A subtle mist of memories drenched in longing forms around the flowers. He was from Paris. He would shower her with flowers and whisper sweet nothings in her ear, and then he disappeared, leaving behind a void and a sweet shiver that haunts her every time she looks at the flowers. Something here. Letter from a capricious reader. Dear Carol, I'm very angry with you for recommending I visit the establishment on 42.2 Alege Zerolizmishki. I just do the first few letters and then go blah, blah, blah. You're mistaken in your belief that a visit there is good for one's health. After all, it's a hotbed of bacteria and fungi. The staff supposedly clean everything every day, but somehow the thought of dipping my body in a place where a dozen other people have soaked before me fills with disgust. Please spare me any such generous advice. Anthony. Secrets. Not on my watch. By his horror in a capricious mind. At the 42.2 Alege Jerozo Limski, there is the central bathhouse where you can take a curative bath. Closing temporarily soon, taking advantage seems like a good idea. Well, there we go. I'd like to point out, by the way, I, I, I've mentioned this, that it is generally seen as a sort of a, a gay pickup spot and stuff. I'm not judging that at all. I mean, why not? <laughs> Basically, you know, that's. Oh, could only be a positive for people who are uh, into that kind of thing, as far as I'm concerned. The things people come up with. Pomade. Wonder if it came from that famous stolen shipment. That was ages ago we heard about that. The pomade smells of desire. His face was as if carved in marble, and his pomaded moustache was curled with finesse. He was distant, almost indifferent. But his eyes, his eyes when he looked at her, said more than the whole world. Trembling at the heart. Here we have a genuine Parisian man of fashion. Oh, I wonder if this is the thing I was looking for. A subtle rustling of satin, a moustache with an elegant pomade curl, a stern countenance and passionate eyes that hold a promise of golden mountains and wildflowers strewn at the feet of a naked lover. <gasps> That's how one should live, and if one can't live that way, one must at least imitate the life of a bon vivant with a chic attire. 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 Chic attire. <laughs> you just talk too fast and the words start making sense. I mean, not wrong, if you could spend your days looking at golden mountains and throwing wildflowers at the feet of your naked lover, you should do that, you know, that should be how you live your life if you have that option, really. 
We all pray to one day have that option. Did I feel more valiant and vital? Hard to say. The warm water certainly brought comfort to my tense body. Chilling at the bathhouse. I mean, it looks nice. I'd hang out at the bathhouse. I say that. There was a... A bathhouse. Uh, I wonder if this worked. Yeah. There is a scene in... Maybe I'm wrong, actually. Maybe this is more a UK thing, because I don't think we properly... We probably do have them here, but it's definitely not as well known. But on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, there's an episode where Jake Peralta and the old cop, I can't remember his name, they go to a bathhouse and chill. They call it a spitz or something, a spritz, I can't remember what it's called, it's something like that. I guess a Jewish thing, though, which would make sense, I guess. Turkish. Hmm. Wait, I'm going to Google this. My curiosity is getting the better of me. Uh, bathhouses England. This probably is a thing. Oh, wait, no, this is a Wikipedia article. That's not very helpful. Uh... Okay, I mean, yeah, there are. There's, there's a proper... There's a proper one in London. It's just called a health spa. It looks... I don't know, it looks a bit... posh, though. I feel like they should be... I mean, these are quite nice. I've got to say, they actually look really nice. <laughs> the Therme Bath Spa in Bath, England, coincidentally, looks really nice. It's a place called Roman Baths, which again looks really nice. Although I think this isn't actually a bathhouse, this is like a history thing. Oh no, maybe it's not. Oh, it is, yeah. It's definitely not a big thing, but there's a few of them for sure. Um, interesting. It's not really the thing I would ever... I mean, I'd probably go once for the hell of it. <clears throat> do everything once, as far as I'm concerned. La Mode Parisienne, April 1904. Flower motifs and oriental patterns have recently become popular in men's fashion. Patterned vests with shining elements are now an indicator of true elegance and unaffected class. At the reader's request, at the end of the issue, there's an extensive report from a visit to a master hairdresser in Paris who talks about the currently popular hairstyles. And back we go. <clears throat> I think I'm saving my points, by the way. I don't think we're spending... I think if I see something that requires heart or mind six, like an item, we'll we'll put the points in. Otherwise, we're going to hold off, I think. Because I'd like to have two points ready for um, my next two salutors, whenever the heck we get them. Another reason we have to kind of be very thorough with the side quests and stuff, though, because as we've seen, Marana and the Jin were both optional. Like, I could have missed out on them entirely. Oh, hell, we had the chance to turn down. Oh, wait. We had the option to turn down the gin entirely. That one there, that bottom one for Deed, I think? Kind of looks like the Golem to me. Interesting. Because he's the teller. Hey, it's still popular in here. Mr. Shulsky, come in. What's new? Please be the last one. Please be the last one. I've got some fresh ideas for you. Promising. Oh. But you can't keep no. wearing the same attire. Please, come back to me if you find more inspiration. Meanwhile, I will... How does she need from me, man? I found so many. <laughs> I really th hoped this was going to be the last one. Nice though, though. I like I like the flower and this. Wait, wait, wait! I need to see. The, let me see the back of it. It's got like some fancy ass. Look at that! Very cool. Well, not really. This is the kind of clothing you just can't get away with wearing these days. Man. All right, go on then. I mean, you can. You can wear whatever the hell you want, but. You should expect people to perceive you in a certain way. Your clothing choices say something about you as a person. And that should never be, oh, I'm rich or I'm poor or whatever, but it should say something about your personality. Do you want to blend in? Do you want to stand out? Are you brash and bold or are you slyly provocative or, you know, what are you? Me, I don't really care. <laughs> Must be said. <laughs> 
Well, that matters. <laughs> when it comes to buying clothes for me, as long as it's a good fit and it's comfortable enough, and that the t-shirt is kind of show off my arms, I'm happy. That's really all it takes for me to be to be happy. I'm vain. What can I say? No point in putting gold this time. Also, speaking of workouts, my arms are killing me. Proper did my forearms in yesterday. I had no idea about this place. Oh, the floor is covered by a thick layer of dust. No one's been here in a long time. Broken complaint. This is Stanislav. Once there was a plate, now it's no more. Oh, the fragility of existence. We can't have an existential crisis about a plate. The shards are livid. The conversation was calm until it wasn't. Emotions soared, manners evaporated, and the smell of expensive tobacco, disappointment, and ambition hung over everything. Very interesting that ambition is capitalized, which suggests it's maybe a flaw. What was once whole became disintegrated. The proud name Plate was replaced by the insult Junk Forever. Mysterious tenement house. Impossible to make a mistake for anything else. Tobacco, disappointment, and ambition. Father's trace. This is where he would meet with his shady friends, apparently accompanied by heated arguments. Typical. I know this trace. Conspirator's trace. The same precision, the same exactness. I know this trace. I discovered it on the box in Father's study. So is this the rabbi? It seems that the person who asked Father to meet is a doctor with ties to revolutionaries. I would never have guessed that Stanislav Swilski, a symbol of prudence and conformity, actually had subversive friends. I need to meet this doctor. Dirty cup. You can still see dried coffee residue inside. There are words in the cup spoken with care and precision. The issue they refer to is a difficult one. It concerns young people with extreme revolutionary views. Those who hurt and are hurt and later end up in his clinic. Hello. Sweet, Sweet secret. secret. There's a rabbi's race. The warmth of the Sabbath candles, the joy and pride in the community of which one is part. I know this trace. It belongs to Rabbi Sofa. So there's at least three of them involved. Sweet secret. One of Father's mysterious friends was Sofa, whose amulet I found in study at the home. Box of cookies. There are Hamatashen inside. What are Hamatashen? Right, we're going to find out what Hamatashen are. Hama Haman Tashen. Haman Tashen. We're learning today, folks. Oh, they look good, actually. Triangular pocket pastry associated with the Jewish holiday of Purim. I'll get you a picture. Should I be, if I just drag and drop, this should work, right? If I just do this. There you go. That's what they look like. They look nice. Filled with, like, a jam or a chocolate spread kind of thing. They look good. See? Educational. <laughs> Hey, you, Pierre. I'll talk to you in a minute, buddy. Let me just double-check. Okay, there's nothing here. Hey, you, Pierre. I think that's everything now. So, besides father, there were two more. A candy lover and a coffee lover. Konevsky must have had one of them in mind. The one with the sweet tooth looks like a rabbi. I should look for him in the synagogue. The coffee lover, meanwhile, that's what I call you now, the doctor. Because you help rabbis and people the hospital is off limits to. Rebels and revolutionaries. Luckily, I know someone who matches the description. Maybe we'll find out what she needed that ammunition for. Come on, we'll be careful. Time to get some donuts at the Rodwitz. I mean, that's a pretty cool way to be a doctor. I don't know, looking after revolutionaries and such. I think that's cool. On we go! Why is there only one trace? Unless they're both in the same direction. Surely there should be two. Maybe it's just taking me to a... Uh... Yeah. To the bazaar! God, bear in mind, didn't one of these set the golem on us? I mean, you assume it's a rabbi, because... Golems, obviously of Jewish origin. But we don't know the doctor, so. Mm, still only one. Interesting. Do we have to get donuts first? For some reason I'm unsure of. I'll have a beer as well. Midas' is golden touch. Everything here is oozing with the precious hop liquid. Oh, kitty cat. Love seeing a cat. In a bar, not sh uh, if I saw it on the counter near the beer, uh, I'd probably be okay with it actually. Bouquet of flowers, probably from a nearby flower shop. Pretty. 
The flowers taste of sorrow and ash. Oh, <laughs> the delicate cultus. The delicate colours of the petals fade, consumed by the need for action, retribution, revenge. To take from others what one has lost. The sensations flowing from the bouquet are intense, choking, intoxicating, frightening. They make up a wonder's trace. This place is huge. Worker leaflets, join the strike, join the fight. Fellow workers, worker collective cannot stand idly by when faced with the cruelties of the Sardom and the whims of the capitalists. The hour when the people finally take despotism to task draws ever closer. We call on you to join the strike. Our solidarity will break the enemy's resistance. If we persevere in our fight, the oppressor will be unable to cut off every head from the Hydra of Revolution. A wave of exploitation. Long live the workers' cause. Warsaw Worker Committee of the Polish Socialist Company. Leaflet burns with a flame of just cause. The fire that consumes it is aimed against the occupant, the master, the oppressor, and against anyone who torments the Polish working class. These things are always funny to me, and I, I am full on your work revolution, unions, etc. Very pro all that. However, the funny thing about revolution is, is people are all basically the same, right? And when there's a revolution and you put your people into power, inevitably, <laughs> some people get downtrodden along the way, and eventually you become used to power and you become the very thing you hated, and you. Uh, convince yourself you're different, but usually you're not. And then people realize, like, the actual problems of being in power and stuff like that. And then someone else wants to have a revolution. We're all just in cycles of revolution, really. It's kind of happening with British politics in a weird way, in that, like, everyone's desperate to get the Conservatives out at the moment because they are truly fucking awful. But Labour really isn't much better either. We're just replacing one terrible political party with another. And it's being framed as a victory, and it's not going to be a victory, because Labour suck. And I vote Labour. And I probably will continue to vote Labour, just because... This is interesting as well, sorry. <laughs> More things to talk about. We don't have a two-party... Okay. We don't have a two-party system in the UK in the way that the US has a two-party system. There are many, many parties, and some of them are viable. The Liberal Democrats get seats, even the Green Party get seats. UKIP get seats. Scottish National Party get seats. Uh... El Cymru, whatever they're called, in Wales get seeps. Blah, 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 blah. Synfide in Ireland. Um, so it isn't necessarily a protest vote to vote for, say, the Greens or something like that. However, the interesting thing I always try to balance is, on one hand, so let's say I want to vote for the Green Party, which I probably would. Uh, I don't want to vote for the Lib Dems. I, I probably would vote for Lib Dems in the past. However, after their um, horrible turnabout like a decade ago, I kind of don't trust the Lib Dems anymore. They they screwed up their party for all of time. Let's put it that way. Nick Clegg condemned the Lib Dems to the void for a few decades, I suspect. Um, but so I could vote for the party I truly believe in more so because I just don't like what Labour have done lately. I think Starmer's basically right-wing but just less right-wing than the conservatives bearing in mind however that right-wing politics in the uk are far less right-wing than those in america substantially so like everyone here is still pro-abortion and stuff like that there's not there's none of that nonsense going around um but if i vote for someone other than labor the chances of our conservatives aren't going to win but the chances of them getting in again do go up for everyone who votes for someone other than labor so how do you balance that? How do you balance between... So do you try to get as many seats as possible for the party you really want to get in, or... A party that has their own problems as well, it must be said. Or do you vote for the what... For, are you trying to make sure you defeat the worst evil or get the best party in? You know, and it's not necessarily going to be the same choice. Do you play it... Voting for Labour is kind of like playing it safe, basically. Because I'd rather have Labour in the Conservatives, even if I don't like modern Labour. But I'd rather not have Labour in either. So it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a strange one. Worker magazine. Proletarians of all countries unite. Go forth, Warsaw. On the streets of Moscow, the people are fighting the Sardom. The land that's forever housed the capital of the Tsars is soaked with the blood of the Russian proletariat, murdered with grape shot and cannons. But the people refuse to yield. They boldly raise their banner in defiance of the enemy's howlings. 
Goddamn hiccups. Storm. An ever louder cry echoes against them. <laughs> they boldly raise their banner in defiance of the enemy's goddamn hiccups. <laughs> An ever louder cry echoes against the walls of the Kremlin. Away with the Sardom. Long live the constituent assembly. Welcome to cuisine. Okay. At Burke Rublitz's. It's not immediately apparent, but this establishment is a meeting place for revolutionaries. What's more, wonders here. The bouquet is fresh, and without a doubt, she's the one who brought it here. Hard to mistake her trace for any other. Right, that's why we're here. It's a donut shop. Well, no, it's a pub. And a place for revolutionaries. Okay, so we'll talk to Wanda in the next video. Um, it's funny, I said in the last video I didn't have anything to say. I feel like I've had a billion things to say today. This game is good for that. It's it's Again, it's like Disco Elysium. It's one of those games that kind of makes you have things to talk about. Because there's a lot of political things going on and stuff like that. And I, I have... Thoughts. I have thoughts on everything, though. I feel like I... It doesn't matter if they're informed. <laughs> I have feelings. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways. That's gets so dusky. Dusty. Anyways, today is Thursday, so I am recording this day off as per, and that will probably be true tomorrow as well, but I will try to probably record a little bit ahead of time over the weekend. Uh, next week... <sighs> It's going to be a little... We might be taking a small break soon. Um, I'm going to try not to until we finish Thaumaturge at least. Um, as I've talked about a few times, the secret channel, inverted commas, I should, in theory, get the things back on Tuesday next week. I've been told that's when I'm getting them. So if that's the case, I suddenly have... A lot of work to do, <laughs> to say the least. There's a lot to do. Um, but we'll see what happens. I don't want to count my chickens before they become chickens. Thank you for joining me. Cheers, much of as always. Bye-bye.